New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. But Nick, you say that Danny's alibi for the murder is good. It's airtight and positive, Patsy, but I still don't believe it. But he could be innocent, couldn't he? I doubt it. He started swearing ahead an alibi even before he knew what time the murder occurred. Sure, but can you do anything about that? I can, and I'm going to. I've got an earthquake machine that's going to prove that Danny is the murderer. For faster, easier cleaning, I mean really faster and easier, switch to new post-war old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite. Get two packages tomorrow. Then see how much faster new post-war old Dutch cuts grease. Thrill to the new, almost effortless ease, activated seismatite gives new post-war old Dutch. It cleans, polishes your sink and tub with a new, smooth, gliding action that means less work, less rubbing. New post-war old Dutch cleans away dirt and stains with new, miracle-like speed in hard or soft water. Then, snowy white, it rinses away quickly when cleaning is done. So try it, won't you, tomorrow? And see if it doesn't clean faster with less rubbing than any other cleanser you've ever used. That's new post-war old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite at your dealers now in the same familiar package. Now for the case of the exploded alibi. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. The streets of the big city are strangely silent as a sleek black convertible purrs its way down Seaton Boulevard. Suddenly, what the deuce? Hmm? Oh, are we home already, Nick? No, Patsy, we're not. Then why did you stop? I'm curious to know why the art museum is all lighted up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, Nick, don't tell me that you're going to stop and investigate just because there are a few lights on. I certainly am. Okay, Nick, you go prowl around all by yourself then. I'm going to stay right here and finish my nap. Come in. Yeah, that's right. I'll wait here till the squad arrives. Yeah, goodbye. Hey, something wrong, officer? Hey, who are you? I'm Nick Carter. I was just passing... Nick Carter? Hey, I've heard of you. Well, thanks, but what's wrong? Plenty. Sam Hildred, the night watchman here in the museum, has been murdered. Well, how'd you happen to find him? You on duty here? No, no. I'm on the park detail, so this is on my beat. You see, I go off duty at 2 o'clock, and I usually stop in and have a cup of tea with old Sam before going back to the station. And that's what you did tonight? Yeah. Well, Sam wasn't in the office, so I waited for him, thinking maybe he was making his rounds. Did you hear anything while you were waiting? Not a thing. But when he didn't show up after half an hour, I went to look for him. And found him dead? Yeah. Lying on the floor in the Egyptian section with three bullets in him. And you didn't see anybody? Not a soul. The place was deserted. So I called headquarters. Uh Uh-huh. you mind if I take a look at the body? No, no. Come on. I'll show you where it is. He ain't a pretty sight, is he? Murder is never pretty, Bert. Say, this is rather odd. What's that? You notice how two of the bullets got him right near the heart? Both were apparently fired from a distance. Yeah, neither one of them would have killed him, looks like. Yeah, but this third shot, the one on the abdomen, that was fired from close up. Say, you're right. You can see the powder burns on his vest pocket. Well, look. What? This watch, or what's left of it, was in his vest pocket. Yeah, and would you look at that? The bullet shot the stem clean off of it. And stopped the watch at exactly 2.27. Well, that's one clue we got. The time of the murder. Apparently. Did you look to see whether anything's missing? Oh, I didn't take time. But there's a display case right over here that's pretty badly smashed up. Well, let's have a look. I just happened to see it when I was... It's smashed up, all right. Hey, what's that card say, Mr. Carter? This exhibit is from the collection of Tyler Van de Vries. Hey, ain't he that rich guy you always hearing about? He's not only rich, he's one of the most famous collectors of Egyptian relics in the world. Gee, this stuff must be valuable, huh? Can you tell what's missing? Well, there's a vacant space in the center of the case, but I wouldn't know it was there. Well, we can find that out from the museum fellas. They'll know. 
Well, first, let's see whether... Hey, boy. Oh, he has a gun on the floor. Then that must be the murder weapon. Shouldn't be surprised. And judging from the smell of it, I'd say it's been fired very recently. Oh, watch out for fingerprints, Mr. Carter. Yeah, I'm watching. Well, I doubt that there are any identifying marks of any kind on this gun. If there were, it wouldn't have been left here on the floor. Mm-hmm. Three empty shells. There's no hey, doubt that they... Hey, hey, somebody's coming, Mr. Carter. So I hear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. This is very bad for the museum's reputation. That ain't all it's bad for, it. Hey, is that you, Nick? Nobody else, Matty. Look, how come you always seem to beat me to the scene of any crime? I don't. Not always. Too bad they had to drag you out of bed at this unearthly hour, Matty. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> oh, Nick, this is Mr. Steiner, curator of the museum. Uh, Nick Carter, Professor. How do you do? Uh, you picked him up and brought him along to see if anything's been stolen. Uh, Mr. Carter, this is terrible. Such a thing hasn't happened here in 20 years. Is anything missing? Well, suppose you tell us that. Oh, dear me, I'll never hear the end of this. Oh, by the way, your watchman is over here if you care to see it. The Vandebree's case has been broken open. The most valuable collection in our home. Sergeant, the Ankatara scarab is gone. It's gone. The what is gone? The Ankatara scarab, one of Mr. Vandebree's most priceless pieces. One of the few remaining jewels of the Fifth Dynasty of Egypt, worn by the Princess Amun-Ra herself. Obviously a collector's item, then? Oh, definitely. Only a collector would be interested. Oh, how can I ever explain this to Mr. Van Well, under hey, the... Hey, Sarge, what's all them things in the next room? That don't look like museum stuff to me. It isn't. The City College of Science is remodeling their engineering building, and they've some of their stuff here stored in the next room temporarily. No, oh, I, I do hope nothing else is missing. I'll never be able to hold up my head again. Here's my whole life worth. Sarge, you want I should wait? No, Burke, you go ahead. My men will be here. Oh, there you are, Sergeant. Well, what do you got here? Oh, so you finally got here, did you, Williams? What do you mean, finally? You know what I mean. Now, look, you and McGlone get busy. Go over everything, get fingerprints, anything you can find. And have the boys sure, get... Sure, sure. Have the boys get plenty of pictures. Eh? Yeah, now, wait a minute. Doc Bradley, come with you? Yes, Sergeant, I'm here. Oh. I'm here. Show oh. me the body and let me get back to bed. Yeah, it's right over there, Doc. See what you can make okay, out of it. Okay, okay. He was shot three times, Doc. Yes, yeah, so I see. Yeah. Hmm. What is it, Doc? Any one of those bullets could have been fatal. How long do you think he's been dead? Oh, between two or three hours. Can't say for sure. Well, what about those three wounds? Are they all alike? Uh, no, Carter, they're not. I'll have to probe for the two bullets in his chest, but the third one's right near the surface. It's funny. It was fired close to the body, but it didn't go very deep. That's because his watch stopped it. His watch? I don't see any watch. I have it here. Took it out of his pocket to examine it. Huh? Well, well, will you look at that? The stem was shot clean off. And the watch was stopped at 227, which may indicate... Nick, what that... in the world are you... Uh-oh. Hiya, Patsy. Who's that on the floor? The night watchman shot by a burglar. So you were right, Nick. There was trouble here. Yes, Patsy, there was. Theft and murder. Mm. Well, I guess I've got all I can get here for now. Well, let's go then. It's not getting any earlier. Very sage observation, my comely and efficient young secretary. I shall act on it at once. Good night, Mary. See you in the morning. Good morning, Nick. Why, good morning, Patsy. <sighs> Didn't expect you for hours yet. Well, I was going to sleep late, but I couldn't. I was much too curious to find out about the murder. Uh-huh. The true professional instinct, Patsy. What are you doing now, Nick? Oh, I've been going through our files, trying to pick out all the crooks who would be interested in stealing that precious scarab. Would that be a special kind of a crook, Nick? It would. Why? Because in spite of the scarab's value, there's a limited demand for such things. The thief would have to know where to sell it after he stole it. Oh. And there are very few crooks who would know that. How many such crooks have you found? Only three. Well, who are they? Uh, Danny Merson, Jim Peterson, and Jack Grogan. Hmm. I don't seem to recognize any of those names, Nick. No, we've never had any active connection with any of them. Hmm. Well, let's see here. Uh, Danny Merson stole a rare old vase from Senator Johnson's home three years ago and is now in state's prison. Which that's him now. Wh who's next? Jim Peterson. Let's see, he's doing time in Nevada for forgery and counterfeiting. His sentence has several years to run yet. Then he couldn't have done it. Which leaves Jack Grogan. Wanted on a burglary charge by the Montana police. Disappeared six months ago, believed to be dead. And none of them could have done it. Uh, suppose you call Matty. See whether he knows anything about any of these men. Of course, Nick. <laughs> But haven't you any other clues? This seems like guesswork. Eliminating suspects is never guesswork, Patsy. Part of the routine work that solves many a case. Homicide. 
Sergeant Matheson. This is Patsy, Sergeant. Oh, top of the morning to you, Patsy. Sergeant, we've got three suspects. Yeah? Danny Mearson, Jim Peterson, and Jack Rogan. A fine collection of crooks. W- would your record show where any of these men are now? Well, Peterson's still in jail as far as I know. But Danny Mearson was let out on parole three days ago. Nick, he says Mearson's out on parole. Oh, that's interesting. How about Grogan? How about Grogan, Sergeant? Our records show he's presumed to be dead. Yeah? Well, he ain't. He's been seen around town the last couple of days. Does Nick think he did it? Oh, Nick isn't talking yet. Not for publication. Uh, well, tell him to hurry up. If he don't, I'll go ahead and solve the case by myself. Oh, do you have any good clues, Sergeant? Well, I... Uh, it, why, of course I do. Oh, good for you. Let Nick know when you catch the murderer, will you? Why, you... Goodbye, let... Sergeant. <laughs> what did he say about Grogan? Oh, that he's been seen around town in the last few days. Well, now, so Mearson is free and Grogan's back in circulation again. Which huh? gives you two suspects. <sighs> Not so good. Well, Mearson's a better suspect than Grogan. He'd be needing money if I know him. But you can't have him picked up without something to go on. True enough. But I can call on him and see what he has to say. If you can find him. I think I can. He always used to stay at the old Santley house. I shouldn't be surprised if he were staying there right now. But do you think he'd go back to an old address after committing a crime like this? From what I know of Danny, he'd be so sure he left no clues that he wouldn't even try to hide. Suppose you tell Maddie to have his men pick up Grogan and to meet me at the Santley house in half an hour with a search warrant. I'll bet we get results. <laughs> Ah, uh, Nick, I give up. There ain't a thing in this room that shows that Danny Mearson ain't been strictly on the up and up since he got out. I'm afraid I have to agree with you, Manny. Uh, uh-oh. Uh, that must be Danny coming back. Nonsense. He wouldn't knock on his own door. Quiet. Yeah. Well, well, if it ain't Jack Grogan. Who's that? This is darn nice of you, Grogan. Yeah. What's nice about it? Well, I had the boys out looking for you, and they couldn't find you, so now you find us. What you looking for me for? Just wanted to ask you a few questions. Questions? Mm Mm-hmm. About what? Uh, Suppose we go into that when we get down to headquarters, okay? You ain't taking me to no headquarters cover. Hey, wait wait a minute. Don't don't be a fool, Grogan. You can't cover us both with that gun. Ah, well, if either of you moves before I say so, you'll see if I can cover you both. Grogan, look at me a minute. Yeah. What's in your mind, copper? I just want to warn you... What's the matter? I told you! Uh, 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 So it was Jack Grogan who showed up at Danny Mearson's room in the old Santley house. We'll see what this means to Nick and Matty in just a moment. Try it. New post-war old edge cleanser made with activated seismatite. Compare it. See if it doesn't clean in less time with less rubbing than any other cleanser you've ever used. For only new post-war Old Dutch brings you activated seismatite. And that means new smooth action, new ease, new snow white appearance. It's the first major cleanser improvement since the introduction of seismatite. So try new post-war Old Dutch on your sink, tub, pots, and pans. And see for yourself if it doesn't clean faster, easier than any other cleanser you've ever used. New post-war Old Dutch cleanser carries the good housekeeping seal of approval and is at your dealer's now in the same familiar package. Now, back to the case of the exploded alibi. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. When Sergeant Matheson invited Jack Grogan to go down to headquarters and talk things over, Jack objected strenuously. Ah. Nice work, Nick. That did it. Never thought he'd be fool enough to think he could keep the two of us covered. Not when we were on opposite sides of the room. Come on, Grogan. Get up. Get up. What you picking on me for, copper? You just pulled a gun on an officer of the law. Put your hands out. Okay, okay. Grogan, what are you doing here anyway? Well, Danny and me, we... Well, he owes me some money. So you dropped in to collect? When he wasn't here. Yeah. I thought maybe... Look, uh, you and Mearson wouldn't have been working together on that job last night, would you? What job? Well, we'll talk about that down at headquarters. Are you coming, Nick? Oh, uh, no, no. I'm not through here yet, Matty. Suppose you turn Grogan over to the coppers waiting downstairs and then come back here, will you? Okay, Nick. Come on, Grogan. Come take on. It easy. Now, look, copper. I said I'm going to come here. Now, let me see. 
Grogan and Mearson were working together. Maybe Grogan came back here to double-cross Mearson. And if he did that, it may mean something's hidden here after all. What? Uh Uh-oh. Hey, what the... Well, hello, Danny. Nick Carter. Hey, what are you doing in my room? Why, just looking around. Looking around for what? I think you know. Don't try to be cute, Carter. You got a search warrant? Sure, we got a search warrant. You want to see it? Well, so you're in this, too. You're darn right I am. What are you to expect to find here? Something that disappeared from the museum last night. Well, you won't find it here. You seem to be right this time, Danny. We've looked and we haven't found it. Where'd you hide it? Seeing I don't know what you mean, I can't answer that. You mean you won't? Well, what's the matter, Sergeant? You look unhappy. I am, I am. I got a fierce headache. Didn't get enough sleep last night. Well, there's some aspirin in the medicine cabinet in the bathroom. Help yourself. Hey, I'll do that. You got a glass? I can't take the stuff without water. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Sergeant, but, well, I broke the only glass I had this morning. You broke the only glass, Danny. What's that on the shelf behind you? On the shelf? Oh, yes, I, I, I forgot that one. Here you are, Sergeant. Oh, thanks, sir. I, oh, I'm sorry, Sergeant. It slipped out of my hand. Okay, okay, I'll take it plain. Danny, you didn't drop that glass accidentally. Hey, what are you getting at, Nick? For some reason, Danny doesn't want you to have a drink of water, Matty. What? Maybe he doesn't want to run the water in the basin. Look here, you dope. I just tried Turn to... Turn on the water, Matty. See what happens. You, you can't... We can't do what? I... I mean, here, I'll do it for you. That faucet is kind of tricky. Oh, yeah? You see, you have... Don't move, Sergeant. Great. I got my gun right in the middle of your back. If you make a move, I'll... Okay, okay. I ain't moving. And if your friend tries anything fancy, you'll get it. I understand, Carter? Yeah, Yeah, I understand. What's your proposition, Danny? Now, just take the thing you've been looking for and get out of here without any interference. Otherwise, you... Well, that seems fair enough. What do you say, Matty? I say you're crazy, Nick. You're going to let this... Shut up, Matty. Yeah, but I... You might say the wrong thing and make Danny sore. Look, you two. I got a gun in the sergeant's back and my arm around his neck. If either one of you guys try anything... We won't. Nick! Nick, I don't get it. No Matty, be quiet. Clam up, copper. I can shoot you, strangle you, and if anybody makes a break, I'll... Matty, Matty, don't talk. All right, but... Just nod your head, yes or no. Oh. Now, what do you say? Should we make a deal? Oh, good boy, Matty. You got it. Get his gun. Oh, I'll get him. Get him. <laughs> hey, my arm. Let go, you're breaking my arm. I won't break it, not if you hold still. Okay. I know when I'm licked. Uh, Nick, <laughs> oh, you're a cute one. You know, I learned that trick of banging my head against the nose of a guy holding me from behind. But I forgot it till you reminded me. Hey, give me a towel, man. My nose is bleeding. Keep him covered, Matty. Yeah? I want to get the scarab. You mean it's really here? Say it is, unless I miss my guess. You got it, Nick? Not yet, but I'll bet that it's down. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, where? Here in the wash basin drain. Oh, it's a beauty. Are you kidding? You, you mean that's what we've been looking for? That beetle thing? That's it, Matty. This is the scarab of Princess Amun Ra. Well, I'll be dog. Well, Danny, there was a pretty smart trick suspending this thing in the drain of the wash basin by a thread. So that's why he didn't want us to run the water. Of course. If we did, the thread might break. Besides, the scarab just about filled the drain, and the water wouldn't have run off as fast as it should. Uh huh. Well, Danny, are you ready to confess? Confess what? That you stole that scarab and knocked off the museum watchman. No. All you got on me is having stolen goods in my possession. As for the watchman, I got an alibi. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Suppose we all go down to headquarters so you can tell us about that alibi of yours. Nick, do you really think you can prove Danny killed that watchman? Oh, that depends on how good his alibi is, Patsy. Yeah, but an alibi can be faked, can't it? It can And I'm positive Danny's is. Excuse me. Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. Nick there, Patsy? Oh, yes, Sergeant. Here, Nick, it's Sergeant Matheson. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Matty, what have you found out? Look, that Danny's alibi is airtight, Nick. We can't beat it. Are you sure of that? I'm positive. The watchman was killed at 227. 
between 2.10 and 2.35, Danny was in an all-night drugstore three miles from the museum. Are his alibi witnesses good? Well, the drugstore clique remembers him, but what's worse, the cop on the beat stopped in there at 2.20 and talked to him. He knows Danny and swears to the time. Matty, that just isn't possible. Well, maybe not, but look, Nick, we got to prove we're right before we can take him before the grand jury. Okay, okay. I'll find some way. Well, I hope you can, Nick, but make it fast. I'll try. So long. What do you say, Nick? Danny's alibi is airtight. But I still don't believe it. Well, of course he could be innocent. Why are you so sure he did it, Nick? Because he started swearing he had an alibi before he even knew what time the murder occurred. And another thing. The watchman was shot twice from a distance. And once close up. It was a close up shot that stopped that watch. At exactly 227. So what? Look, Patsy, the first two shots killed the watchman. Oh, I understand that, Nick. Okay, so suppose the killer took the watch out of the dead man's pocket, set it ahead to 227... Then put it back in his pocket. And then in order to stop the watch, and also to make it look as though it stopped at the exact time of the murder, he shot the watchman a third time from close up. Well, you really think that's what happened? I'm sure of it. We've got to find some way to prove it. Oh, I'll say. No jury would believe that story without proof. No. Patsy, let's go back to the museum. Okay. Maybe we overlook something that will give us the facts we need. Is there anything else you'd like to see, Mr. Carter? No, nothing I can think of, Mr. Steiner. But you still believe this Mason is guilty? I'd stake my reputation on it. But belief and proof are two very different things. Couldn't you try a lie detector on him? Yes, we could. But unfortunately, some juries still believe that a lie detector is only a makeshift and not real evidence. A clever lawyer can sometimes talk his client out of the results of a lie detector test. Hmm, I suppose they think a wiggly line running across a chart doesn't really mean anything definite. Ridiculous. Any scientist knows better than that. And take the seismograph, for example. I look at it every morning. That wiggly line, as you call it. Do you have a seismograph here in the museum? Why, yes. It's part of the apparatus the City College of Science stored in the next room. Of course, I remember now that you mentioned something. Have they had it running? Why, yes, they have. Then I want to see it, quick. But why, Nick? Patsy, that seismograph is going to prove that Danny Merson's guilty of murder. That's a new wrinkle, a seismograph used as proof in a murder case. Just how Nick plans to use this information, we'll find out in just a moment. It's activated, ladies. The new post-war old Dutch cleanser is made with activated seismatite, and that means new speed, new ease in cleaning. So compare, see for yourself on your pots and pans, notice how much faster new post-war old Dutch cuts grease. Thanks to activated seismatite found only in new post-war Old Dutch, it cleans, polishes with a new smooth gliding action that means less work, less rubbing. Then thrill to the ease with which new post-war Old Dutch removes dirt and stains from your sink or tub with new miracle-like speed in hard or soft water. And you'll find that new post-war Old Dutch, now snowy white, rinses away quickly when cleaning is done. Truly, here's the first major cleanser improvement since the introduction of seismatite. New post-war old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite at your dealers now in the same familiar package. Try it tomorrow. Now for the conclusion of the case of the exploded alibi. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. The scene is Sergeant Matheson's office at police headquarters. The sergeant and Nick are discussing Danny Mearson's case with Danny and his lawyer. Mr. Carter, I demand to know why my client, Mr. Mearson, is being treated like this. He's admitted to being a receiver of stolen goods, but he's guilty of nothing else. Mr. Amberley, you claim that Danny couldn't have stolen the scarab and killed the watchman because at the time the murder and theft were committed, he was at a drugstore some three miles from the museum. That's absolutely correct. Mr. Amberley, the watchman was apparently killed at 2.27, if we can judge by the time his watch stopped. But actually, he was killed exactly one hour and 12 minutes before the time shown on the watch. Why, that's impossible. The watchman's timepiece... The watchman's timepiece was set ahead by Merson to establish an alibi for himself, and I have positive proof of that fact. That's a lie. It certainly is. It's absolutely ridiculous. Is it? 
Well, the evidence I'm talking about is unemotional, truthful, and positive. It's a seismographic chart. Now, what's that? Yeah, Nick, what in the name of the saints is a size... A seismographic chart? Yeah, what you said. I'll tell you, Matty. Yeah? In the room next to the Egyptian collection in the museum, there's an instrument used to detect earthquake tremors. It's oh. called a seismograph. Uh-huh. And it's so sensitive, it'll record the slightest disturbance. My dear Mr. Carter, I can't You see. will in a minute, Mr. Amberley. I have here the chart that was made by the seismograph last night. Let me show you what well, it says. This is hardly the usual thing. Neither was murder. Now, look. At 12.45, there was a slight tremor. A trembling of the earth, probably due to some very distant earthquake. Well, what do you know? Go on. At 1.05, five minutes past one, there were two sharp eruptions in the immediate vicinity... I can't say exactly what caused them, but they're probably due to blasting in the neighborhood. Or to gunshots in the immediate vicinity. There was no blasting done last night. Get to the point, Mr. Carter. My time is valuable. So is human life, Amberley. Now, notice. The chart shows that at 1.17, 12 minutes later, there was another sharp report, just like the previous ones. But from then on... Until 15 minutes before 6, the line made by the seismograph shows nothing whatever out of the ordinary. Then there were no shots fired in the museum between 1.17 and 5.45 yesterday morning. That's right, Matty. And that means that the watchman was shot and killed at 5 minutes past 1. The killer then took the watch out of the dead man's pocket and set it ahead to 2.27 and then shot him again at 1.17. And that gave him plenty of time to get to the drugstore and set up an alibi. But see here, that doesn't mean Don't that... waste your breath, Amberley. It happened just the way they said. And I'd have got away with it if it wasn't for that, that size... Let's call it a truth machine, Danny, because that's what it really is. It tells the truth, and in this case, makes others tell the truth, too. Doggone it, Nick. That's sure a great machine. Yes, sir, a great machine. Friends, this is Nick Carter again. I want to state a couple of facts. One is that the tuberculosis death rate has fallen 80% since 1904. The other is that even so... Tuberculosis still kills one American every ten minutes. And with these facts in mind, let me ask you all to buy all the Christmas seals you can. I'm positive we all will, Nick. Now, uh, how about a couple of hints about the adventure that new post-war old Dutch cleanser is bringing us next week? Is it as exciting as usual? Well, Bob, there's nothing usual about next week's case. In fact, in my book, it's practically unique. It's a story of an old and valuable manuscript written by a great American man of letters. A manuscript that was the cause of three cold-blooded murders. And for a while, we thought it was going to be the cause of two more, meaning our own. Well, I see why you say it's unique. Uh, What do you call it, Nick? I call it The Case of the Priceless Prose. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company... Makers of new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Jock McGregor. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.